Okay, this video lecture is on hairs and fibers. So let's go over, first we'll do the hair and then we'll do the fiber. And I'm just gonna cover the basics. So whatever shows up or is in this PowerPoint um, will be what is on the quiz. The PDF will help explain some of the things more in depth than what I cover here in the lecture. So when we're thinking and talking about the hair color, um, what determines the hair color are the pigments and it's reflecting the wavelengths of light is what gives it the color. And when you think of color, it's also, it's absorbing some of the wavelengths of life, light. Now, when you talk about the shape of the hair and you look under the microscope, it can be round or oval. Okay, and this is a consistent round or oval. Texture, curly straight, and that'd be something you don't have to put under the microscope. And of course, that's determined by genes. And as far as the texture, Obviously, if you straighten your hair or curl your hair. The body area where all the rest of the hair is found, and that was on the head, okay, the last um, bullet. So the body area, the head, the arm, the leg, and the back, you can, a scientist can tell by the way that the shape, the length, the color, and some other physical characteristics on where it comes from on the body. Um, now, when we look at a cross-section, we're going to be talking about cuticle, cortex, and follicle. And these are the things that scientists use to determine what the hair is and help on classification identification. So this is a cross-section of skin. Okay, so this is the outer layer of skin. These are the hairs that are protruding out. Uh, the cuticle is the outside. The cortex is the middle. And there's also a medulla that's not labeled on here. Where the hair attaches, um, it kind of embeds itself, is the follicle. Okay, so we'll be talking about that also. So the hair will grow out of the hair follicle, as seen as the last chapter, and really the follicle are the skins. And when you look under the microscope, see where the green arrows are pointing? These are the skin cells. Okay, so that is the follicle. And this would be if you pull out a root. If it falls out, and I've got some images of this, you won't see maybe a little bit, but you won't see as many of the skin cells or the hair follicle. So they can actually take DNA from this follicle, which are skin cells that has the DNA inside the cell in the nucleus. Now the length of the hair is going to extend from the surface of the skin out, and it actually starts at the root. So this entire area is the root and that is embedded in the, uh, the, the root itself can also have DNA. So here's the structure of the hair, and we're going to look at each one, because you will need to know when we look at the characteristics, what part of the hair you're looking at. Now, the cuticle is the outside covering, and when you look under the microscope, it's gonna look like uh, snake scales, and scales could be more upright, kind of coming up, kind of, rotating up or lay flat. The brown image on either side, so this would be a longitudinal section cut lengthwise. The brown are the cortex, okay, so that's gonna contain the pigment or determine the color of the hair. The medulla runs down the middle. Now this is what you look at to determine, is it a human hair or does it come from an animal? And animals have very distinct medulla. And I've got some images of that. I love this comparison when they were talking about looking at a pencil. So the lead would be down the middle, that's why I made it gray. The cortex, the hair color, so that's the color wood, color of the skin. And then whatever color your pencil is on the outside, kind of the paint. So I, I like that example. So let's break this down. So you can see the scales. Okay, this is under a scanning microscope. Okay, you will not see that with our digital scopes. I wish we could. So we're looking at the cuticle, the outside, so I already mentioned scales. And a scientist will actually measure how many in are in each centimeter. Now we're not going to do that. How much they overlap, the shape of the scale, and do they protrude from the surface or kind of curl up. They will also look at how thick the cuticle is. So this part here, they will measure that. And then whether or not that cuticle contains any pigment. So looking at species, Caucasian, African-American, uh, Mongoloid, those all different species have different 
makeup or structure of the actual cuticle. So you can determine the race of an individual when you're looking at and examining hairs. Okay, let's move to the inside. We have the cortex, so it's the brown. And again, they will look at the thickness and that will vary from animal to animal and humans. The texture, so there's a lot of similarity. This is where the color, and I'm not sure if you can see on this, but there are some dark images, okay? Those are pigments and they call them pigment granules and it looks kind of grainy. We will be looking at that um, when we examine hairs in the lab. Now this one, you'll notice it's all white. Um, the, out, the black line here, okay, so that would be the cuticle, the outside covering. The white is the cortex. So this is a gray hair, and then the middle down the middle is the medulla. So the cortex is probably the most important because you start off with the colors of the hair, see if it's been chemically treated, perm, etc. And then they will go to the microscope and you'll actually look at the root and the tip. Um, and the medullary index will help you on determining if it's animal or human. Now let's move to the medulla. Again, thickness. Here's a new characteristic that you need to look at, continuity. So is it continuous? And that is this drawing, the first drawing here. So it's there's no breaks in it, running right down the middle. Is it interrupted? That's more uniform, kind of a dashing. Fragmented, it may go long, short, short, long. So there's it's kind of irregular pattern on fragmented. And then how much light can pass through that middle part? Okay, how transparent it is. And again, they vary from species to species and different people. Oh, and sometimes it can be absent, but that's kind of a rare situation. Now, on the quiz, you will not be given a picture and identify what animal it comes from, but this will be helpful when you have to distinguish is it human or animal and then determining the animal in our lab. So you can see the variation, and that's mainly the medulla down the middle. Okay, so this would be a fragmented, and these two here are human. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. Now, if a hair falls out naturally, and this is the root of the hair, you'll notice there's not, if any, skin cells. So here's one little skin cell. Here's one up here. There's a little bit down at the bottom. This is if it falls out naturally. This is a tip that has not been cut for a while, so it kind of grows out to a tip. If you have a lot of split ends, you'll actually can see the split or it'll be a long curl coming off of it. Here is the end again, if it's broken. So this is severely damaged hair. So it's kind of torn off. And this is if they get a haircut. So if you have a suspect that just went to get their haircut, it's gonna be very straight, kind of like this one on the right. Okay, so fiber, so that was the hair section. Now let's move on to fibers. Now you'll notice that this has scales and we are in fibers and the first four are scaled, a little bit different. That's because these fibers are woven and made into a fabric, but obviously it comes from animal hair. Okay, so cashmere, alpaca hair, and then wool, obviously sheep. Then you move on to silk, linen, cotton, and polyester. So some are synthetic and some are man-made. So the type and length of the fiber, it's a, they put it together with a spinning method, and then they construct the fiber and they actually look at the weave. So we'll look a little bit at the weave, not much, just the basics in another lab. And then that will help us determine if anything is transfer, transferred between the suspect and the victim. So sometimes, especially if it's a real old cloth or a fabric clothing, that is really actually beneficial because it is unique in the fibers. Anything that's brand new, like a cotton shirt, white cotton shirt, blue jeans, sometimes those are not very beneficial because they're so common. A lot of people have that. But anything unique on the fibers or the weaving, even the manufacturer will help identify um, a particular victim or even suspect. So we can look at if there's any transfer of fabric. If we have a known crime scene, and maybe the body was moved, so now you have two crime scenes. We can look at any fibers or even hairs in a car and determine if it was used to transfer or to move the victim from one area to another. So that's very beneficial. Natural fibers can either be from a plant or an animal. 
Now, when you look at the fibers under the microscope, they have irregularity to them. They're not all uniforms. So that's how you can tell if they're a natural fiber. And again, you'll need to know this not only for the quiz, but also for your lab as reference. So obviously cotton will come from plants fibers and wool would come from animal fibers. Okay, anything that's synthetic is man-made, very uniform when you look under the microscope. So you can see here all straight lines, same width, everything. And of course the dyeing would make a difference. Okay, so the green and the black, these are two different types of fibers woven together to make a colored fabric, whatever clothing it is. Um, man-made, if you cut it crosswise, now obviously we're looking at a much high power microscope, a uh, scanning electron. This is what it actually looks like, okay? And each one's a little different and it depends on the manufacturer. So it's actually more helpful to look at man-made or synthetic fibers. So here are a lot of different fibers. Uh, the color just depends on the fabric. So we have acrylic, a cotton poly blend, okay? So one would be the cotton, one would be the polyester. Hemp, silk, so there's some irregularity to it, but it's been dyed, the rayon, polyester and nylon and of course you can have any blend of those as most clothes are today. Now when you're looking at fibers also you can see that even between yarn they would vary slightly. So here's acrylic, cotton, polyester and wool. So they all look a little bit different on as far as the waviness do they twist and rope okay because that's used a lot in crimes. Okay, so those can be distinguished if you have a very unique rope. Sometimes you can trace that also back to the manufacturer. So hopefully I didn't spend too much time on this. I know that lectures are getting kind of long, so you can always stop, rewind. And again, I'm not going to ask you any of the images um, in the quiz or the lab, but you'll use this as a reference to help identify our unknown fibers in the lab. So hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions, just see me in class.